it's insanely hard to get perfectly centered on this wall. I'm doing my best. What stands between a developer and the job is the interview. An infamous gateway and double-edged sword. Why a double-edged sword? If you could pass the interview, you don't even need a college degree to work at companies like Google. On the other hand, this means the interview is very difficult. If you're trying to pass an interview without formal training, it might be one of the hardest things you do. But there are two kinds of difficult. The first is difficult because of chance. If you want to be a musician or a movie star, there's only so much that's in your control. Getting into a tech company, though, is the second kind of difficult, the kind you can control. You can learn coding interview problems just like anything else. The interview is just like passing a test at school. You don't know exactly what's going to be on the test, but if you study the concepts enough, eventually you will know enough to pass. So the question is, how and what do you study to pass that test? Well, the bread and butter of big tech company interviews are toy problems. These are logic-based challenges you'll have to solve by writing some code. You'll get one of these questions for a phone screen and then several more when you go on site. You might hear these thrown around as whiteboarding because you often have to solve them on whiteboards when you're in person. So in this video, I'm going to give you a four stage plan to go from zero to being proficient enough at these problems to pass tech company interviews. As we go, I'll give you a framework to actually learn and get good at these problems because getting good at them is pretty hard. This guide will probably be overkill if you want a standard web developer job, but if you want to blow your interviewer away or if you want a super legit developer job, this is what you need to do. Before we start, I will give you a warning. If you focus only on toy problems and nothing else, you're going to hate your life. And for this reason, I would say do a few of these problems per day while following your normal programming routine, that is building projects, continuing to learn your language of choice, and so on. Anyway, let's dive into that five-stage plan for passing any programming interview. Stage zero is to learn the fundamentals of the language of your choice. It doesn't really matter where you go for this stage because there's so many resources to learn the basics online. I'd recommend a Udemy basics course, but I've heard good things about Code Academy, Free Code Camp, college classes you can find online. It, like I said, doesn't really matter. Once you're getting hold of the basics, you can already start on toy problems, which will help you reinforce what you're learning and actually produce instead of just watching the course. If you're watching this channel, I'm assuming you've already started this stage or at least have an idea of how to do it. Okay, stage one, the first real stage is a site called Code Wars. This is a totally free toy problem website with pretty easy questions you can get started with. Toy problem websites, of which there are many, give you a question like reverse the characters in a string, and then you have a text box where you type your code, which would be a function. Then the site will run a bunch of tests on your code to make sure it works. In Code Wars, start with the questions labeled A, K, Y, U. These are the easiest, and the lower number you get, the harder it gets. They're, of course, still not going to be easy at all, but that's the point, and that's how you learn. Now, and this part is really important, here's a framework on how to get good when you're trying to do toy problems. In general, I found toy problems are most efficiently learned by working backwards. That is, looking at the answer, seeing how other people did it, and then deconstructing that to understand it in your own way. People don't talk about this too much, but for a very long time, you're just gonna have to see how other people do the problems until you see the patterns. Unfortunately, unless you come from some sort of a math background, you don't have the logical foundation to figure these out from scratch, so you have to go with the top-down approach, which is just looking at the answer. This leads to what I call the surrender method. As rule of thumb, look at the answer, and if you're totally stuck, or you haven't made progress for 15 minutes, then go and look at the answer, give up. Looking at the answer we think of as failing, but being stuck on a problem does not help you learn anything, and in fact, it's kind of a waste of time. Later, whether in a few hours or a few days, you'll come back and reattempt this problem. Since you saw the answer before, you'll try to remember it, and this is actually a good thing. It's a memory technique called recall. Thinking back to something you previously saw will help you remember it better in the future. This helps us ingrain concepts and retrieve them when necessary. Anyway, getting good at Code Wars should not be too bad. Keep going till you start getting comfortable with the eight and seven questions, and maybe you can do a six KYU or two. Okay, stage two, do a Udemy interview bootcamp. I've sang praises for Udemy before and continue to. It's a micro course format, which I love, but you just have to be careful that you're not only observing the course and you're doing it as well. I know you're not ready to interview at this point, but doing a toy problem bootcamp and hearing someone explain these kind of problems is super helpful. People have asked me to make some sort of an interview prep course. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but until I do, 
I highly recommend Steven Grider's JavaScript Interview Bootcamp, which has toy problems and really good explanations. I'll leave a link for that in the description. This is one of the few Udemy courses I actually did twice, once early on in my development journey, and then again right before I interviewed to just remember a few of these common toy problems. If you're doing Python or another language, I'm sure there are a ton of similar courses, which are just interview prep courses on Udemy, which should be around $10. Just find one that works for you. Hearing people explain how these work out loud in their own way, and then translating that to how you understand it is a really good exercise. Stage three, at this point you should be getting pretty good at basic toy problems, so you're gonna to want to buy a programming interview book. This is when you start learning the real stuff, data structures and algorithms. For this I recommend Cracking the Coding Interview, which I believe is in a variety of languages. Another popular one is called Elements of Programming Interviews. Whether you buy the physical version or find a PDF version online is up to you. Again, and you'll notice a trend here, every time you move on to a stage you'll feel really dumb. This was the stage I probably felt the dumbest because I don't think I could do a single question in the Cracking the Coding interview book until I looked at the answers several times. Just want to say that because this stage is at a lot higher level than Code Wars and you're finally getting into real interview questions. The questions towards the end of every chapter you can just totally skip because they're for higher level programmers anyway. and. As an entry level software developer, you won't even need uh, that level of question. So I'd say go through around the first half of every chapter's questions. Keep using the surrender method and you'll start to see more and more of the patterns between these problems. Stage four final stage is Leet Code, a different toy problem website. If you've made it this far, congrats. Hopefully you've been building projects this whole time because you're almost ready to interview. Leet Code is probably the most popular toy problem website and the level of questions will be similar to cracking the coding interview. On Lead Code, do the questions labeled easy. They're not easy by the way. In the categories string and arrays, data structures and algorithms primarily. Keep using the surrender method of course. The nice thing about Lead Code is it has a great interface and you can track how many problems you've completed. So you have that sense of progress. At this point, I would strongly recommend changing how you approach these problems though. Think of these toy problems as a dress rehearsal for real interviews and take them seriously. Many interviewers do also pull questions directly from Leet Code. By doing this, we're trying to make the toy problem solving process second nature for you. If you can get it down to a routine, you can free up a lot of brain power to focus on the actual problem. So to do this, follow this very specific routine. You're going to want a piece of paper and a pencil. First, write down I, O, E, A. Input, output, edge cases, and assumptions. Try to fill in next to each letter what you think the expected values would be. And for assumptions, assumptions are things you'd want to agree on with your interviewer just so they don't throw any unexpected inputs at you and they kind of limit the scope of the problem. Once you've got that, then you're going to want to use diagrams and draw the problem out the way you understand it. For example, if you're reversing the characters in a string, maybe you'll draw out what's happening on each iteration of a loop. Then write some pseudocode on your paper, which is close to what you'd actually write in code, but maybe not the exact syntax. Finally, you're ready to actually write your code into the answer box. Give it a try, it probably won't work the first time, but at least you've gone through the process, which will, again, carry you through to the actual interview. Another useful trick is to explain the process to yourself as you're going because interviewers want you to do this when you're there in person and communicating is actually equally as important as getting the problem right. Okay, so now the million dollar question, how many leak code problems do you do before you're ready for an interview? Instead of giving you the generic, oh, there's no right or wrong answer, I'm gonna say 50 if they're in the right categories. The right categories being array and string manipulation, data structures and algorithms. Once you get to 50, you're gonna be in a pretty good place. Apart from these 50 toy problems, there are a few essential algorithms every entry level programmer should know. And I'm gonna release these in the next video, so make sure you subscribe and don't miss those. Also ding the bell so you're around to check it out. So those are all five stages, zero to four, because we're counting like programmers. Each one will have you feeling like a complete beginner again when you start it, and that's a good thing. That's how you know you're learning and you've reached the next level. Don't worry, I felt as dumb as you did when I started each stage, but I promise it will get better if you just put the hours in every day.
Thanks for your likes, comments, and whatnot, guys. The channel size has doubled since last month. Let's keep it going and keep learning. See you soon.